Molly, on behalf of the independent group. Thank you very much. I wasn't expecting to speak just at this time, but I'm, I'm delighted to get the five minutes because yesterday when I spoke, I was a little under pressure and I've reflected on this budget and it's an enormous amount of money, 18 billion. And one has to welcome a lot of the measures in it, without a doubt. But what's missing, as I said yesterday, and I'm glad I have an extra few minutes, what is missing is the transformative action needed. More than anyone else, I believe the greatest challenge facing us is climate change. It has to permeate all our actions. But yet we've associated with the negative tax, carbon tax, at a time where the loudest and the clearest message from the government is, don't use public transport. Don't go near public transport at your peril, and then we introduce a higher carbon tax. It's not a good message to send out. And th then I look to see in terms of, I welcome so many of the things, the commitment to indirect provision, the increase in money, the extra money for disability. But I see a uh, Minister Rabbit there. And you know, remember this Ability West, and they all wrote to us all, and they asked for the training, the training um, fund to be put back. I mean, that would have been a measure of the bona fides of what we want to do in terms of empowering people and having a more equal society. So maybe somewhere you could find that tiny amount of money to show that we're serious, not about charity, not about giving the crumbs on the ground, but that we want to empower people. Why? Because it makes for a much better society and a better economy. And then while you're at it, you might look up at the vast for a very long time. And you've been at all the meetings and, and you're very committed in relation to uh, a cost of disability payment. I think they've identified it at 20 or 25 euro per week, minimum. And then I looked at the over 60s, and we've all received representation from those over 66. Now, we told everybody over 70 to cocoon, a word I hated from the beginning. But I played the game for a little while, until such time as I felt nauseated with what we were doing. And I asked for that to stop. And in fairness to Minister Harris at the time, he said he would. But the word persisted. So we told people in, in a disingenuous way to stay at home when we had no authority to do that. And then for those that are working, the SRI told us in May 20 that there are only 65,000 people in that category who are over that age who are working. Very specific sum, completely excluded from everything. Now we talk about us all being in the same, in this together, we're clearly not. Again, a very tiny amount of, uh, of um, people. You might look at that because you have billions put aside in reserve now. So we might go back to look what will we do to make it truly transformative so that we'll be prepared to meet our climate change obligations and to meet the future infections that are going to come? Because our hospital system couldn't uh, meet it because we'd run it down. So I, I look then at um, the, the home help I mentioned just to, my time is limited and I won't go into it, but domestic violence, the mental health, just set up the independent review panel. Take it out of your hands and out of our hands. Set up the independent review panel to review the implementation of the new policy. And with domestic violence, how can we st stand here and talk about equality? Our 18 billion and still not have enough basic refuges for women and children to go to. I mean, the figures are startling. Ireland is obliged to have 472 and we have 141. And can you imagine, I'm asking here for more refuges because we haven't even begun to deal with how women and children are suffering from domestic violence at a cost of 2.5 billion to the economy every year. Imagine that for a waste. 2.5 billion going to waste every year and that's at a conservative estimate. The exact same thing in relation to mental health, the cost to the economy. So I was looking at this and I was saying, how is it doesn't happen. What, what's needed to change this? And certainly a lot more consultation on the ground is needed. And you know that yourself, Deputy Rabbit, and I don't mean to highlight one minister as opposed to another. It's just that you're from East Galway and I've seen you at lots of meetings. And if we look then at local authorities, and I heard the minister saying this extra money going to local authorities, I welcome that. I welcome the extension of the waiver. But what's not clear is, will that money enable the local authorities to continue on providing services? Or will I be raising topical issues here with the permission of the Can Corla in relation to a public swimming pool? And we know that Bandleslow is in trouble and we know that Tume is in trouble. So is this extra money going to ensure that there's a baseline of services below which we won't go? Bad choice of words when you're talking about water. But we're beginning to drown, aren't we, in relation to what we're doing as opposed to saying there's a baseline baseline here of a civilised society. We must have swimming pools, mustn't we? And 
I absolutely support the package for the businesses and all of that. But the irony is we're supporting private pools. And yet nobody here can tell me if we're going to have the public pools open. I'll stop talking because I give out for people going over time. Thank you, Ken Corla. Corla, the last Ken Corla. Now.